This is fat fucking Kelly making videos here. We've got this wonderful frequency in the back. It's called Dissolve Negative Patterns. I'll bring it to the foreground. Anunnaki uh, holding box. Well, you see, when I hang out with the Lulus, I have my my onk, my Lulu programming box. See that? Yeah. When I was five years old, I went to the car show. And I got to sit in Knight Rider. And before I got to sit in Knight Rider, I got to mass at the hood with the other young children and, and talk to us and ask me my name. It was freaking amazing. <clears throat> Just saw a commercial called Ergo. And it shows this little, you know, like a hearing device, like a hearing aid. But it didn't look like a hearing aid. It looked like something that bores into your brain. Then it showed these three different colored frequencies going in and linking up with your mind. Just want y'all to be careful, you know, because you never know what the fuck they're selling us. Guy came over a minute ago and he was like, Yeah, they just released that the TVs are watching us. Well, no shit. Do you know how many times my phone will... It has Amazon Prime... Google video, the movies, and all that shit. All that stuff is disabled. Yet, periodically, once a day, and it did this right after the update. It got an update yesterday. And it's been acting weird. You know, I do different stuff. Causing it to, uh, experience some different, uh, stressors on the time. And, uh, yeah, definitely some outlandish shit. So, I mean, but it's not fucked, totally fucked. I love these, I love this, the way it goes. What I like to start doing is um, going through some of these books that, that are really good and piecing them apart. I did the stanzas of Jan, which I used to listen to these books. I pick a very certain voice, do the robot voice, and uh, play different beats in the background. And I like to start making some of those of the Taoist uh, Jerry Johnson. Jerry Johnson's books are, are badass that guy, I'd love to interview and talk to that guy. And it's uh, that some that work in those things is amazing. It just is, you know. There's not I've, there's so many things in there that just resonate with my soul, you know, things and topics that I've been drawn since I was a little kid. So I definitely feel there's something to that. So I look into it. I like how it does that. It's a uh, Gavin on the wall, beautiful child. Beautiful third son, Gavin. Mr. Gavin. But, anyway, we're having Father's Birthday Jam on the 15th. That should be exciting. Got to put new strings on the bass tomorrow. Trying to think what else to put on here. I'll tell this story about, um, I had an experience at my mom's house. You know, it was in Houston. This is a ghost story, because this really happened to me. It freaked me out. When I was, I was young, and I was in um, um, elementary school, I think it was. It might have been middle school. I had borrowed from my mother, my grandmother, a uh, typewriter. One of the ones that was in the zip-up case, and I had it over there in the room. And the way that my bed was, it, uh, my stepdad had my dresser and from the dresser off of the dresser was the, was the bed so I was off the ground I had climbed it up and I, I would be up about this level in the room where you see that I am well it started to be at night I had a clock over in the corner you know one of those old red you know weird colored uh, analog uh, alarm clocks 
and about three in the morning it would start I could hear like something was hitting that button and then once I got that typewriter that thing was um you could hear the keys typing I couldn't see it it was in the dark but I could hear click, click, click. it scared the hell out of me and then um after um I remember one night I was hearing it type like that and the next morning it had a piece of paper and it had typed in there Sid and Bobby killed me I showed my mom she's like no nah, you did that nobody believed me and then the next night something had grabbed me by my ankles at the top of that bed and pulled me <clears throat> my legs was hanging off like this I mean you don't fall off the bed like that you don't something grabbed my ankles and slid me off and uh that scared the hell out of me and there's a picture of my stepdad um where he used to have his chair in the living room and behind him was the glass door that goes to the backyard and you could see a ghost like a kid hanging there you know and then certainly later on after after a while my mom used to be a nurse and she would come home from work and she'd be writing down her notes or whatever before she went to bed and she said something in front of her and she thought it was my stepdad was like Psst. and then it would get closer and she had never looked up and when she finally did it was nobody was there and it started fucking with her and it would do the same thing like my stepdad be sitting in that chair and this way is uh their room over there about uh eight ten feet that way to his uh right and he said he saw the door open somebody come out and he thought it was my mom going to the kitchen and he got up to see Nobody's there. It started fucking with him. Uh, it was really creepy. You know, and that started when me and Taylor, me and Taylor Babin, uh, played, uh, the damn Ouija board at my house without the needle. You know, I took that damn thing and I took it out to the woods and broke it apart. Like, cause you could walk to the end of my street and there was a gate and behind it was the, the, a trail to the woods. And then you went to another neighborhood. It connected the two neighborhoods through the woods. And, uh, I, I came back to my house and the motherfucker was leaning against my fucking mailbox. Scared the fuck out of me. I don't know how, I don't even know how I'm remembering that that happened, but it, I sure did. Uh, and then I burnt it. I took it back out there and I got some lighter fluid and I burnt it. And they didn't come back after that. So don't mess with the Ouija boards. That's all I want to say.